Hello everyone! Now we will start our lesson on the 3D modeling software SketchUp. First, I will give you a brief introduction to the software SketchUp. It was actually first developed by Google. In fact, the original intention was that people all over the world would use the Google Map 3D mode. But later, a free version was released, which is the program that we are using today. SketchUp Make. SketchUp Make has always been free we can use it in our 3D drawing lesson. So, now, I'd like to ask everyone to please open up the SketchUp window. Now we are going to open the SketchUp Make window. Because it is a 3D drawing software, we can see that in this entire space, we'll use the Orbit tool in the bottom left so that we can rotate our view. Basically, it has three dimensions and three axes, the vertical blue axes and the XY axes. Here, there are green and red parts. These are the three aspects of this three-dimensional space. I will first explain how to rotate our view. By orbiting, we can see the entire space of the model. On the right is the pan tool. We can control the point of focus. So, let's first draw a simple shape, a rectangle in the middle. We can see this rectangle in this three-dimensional space. Now I will explain how to use the various tools in the left column. First, let's introduce this arrow. This arrow is the most basic of all the tools in this software. It is the selector. If we use the selector to click inside the rectangle that we just drew, the selection menu will appear. Actually, after we select it, we can move it or cancel the selection. So this selection tool is the most basic. The paint bucket is under the selection tool. Because the paint bucket has to do with color, we will introduce it later. The tool below this is the pencil tool. It's a line. It's the line drawing tool. The rectangle we just placed used this rectangle tool, but actually the basic lines were drawn with the pencil. With the drawing tools, we can use the pencil and left click with the mouse to draw a line on the right, then left click again. Now we can see that we have generated a line segment. Of course, because we are in a 3D space, if we use the pencil tool to draw a vertical line, and if we press up on the keyboard, press up on the keyboard, you will see that the line you drew becomes blue. So it is a blue axis line. Let's go back to the rotating tool and take a look. You can all see that this line is different from the line on the ground because it is a vertical axis. Now, with this blue axis line, if we connect the two lines together, what will happen? Everyone knows that when two lines intersect, a plane is generated. So if they overlap, then they will change color, indicating that a face has been created. So with the line tool, after lines keep being generated, they can intersect and become surfaces. Now you can practice using the line tool. Hello everyone. Now we will introduce the circle and rectangle tools. In the left toolbar, we can directly select the rectangle tool we just used. Everyone, you should notice that in the bottom right corner, some numbers are changing. These numbers can be used if you want to make some relatively fine adjustments when you are setting the size. You can use the keyboard to directly type and input your numbers. For instance, we can type in 200, 200, then hit enter. Now, you can see that there is a 200 centimeter by 200 centimeter sized data. Of course, we all know that this is a square. 
So actually, you can use the data entry at the lower right corner to input directly. Or if you want to do some relatively intuitive designing, then you can drag the size by yourself. In this way, you can actually draw a rectangle. For circles, underneath the rectangle tool is the circle tool. Here, if I pull the mouse to the left, you will see that the size in the bottom right also changes. This is the radius. We can also directly use the keyboard to input a number. For example, let's enter 300. Now there is a circle with a radius of 300 centimeters. This is the circle tool. Actually, on the right is the polygon tool. After selecting the polygon tool, a polygon that is a hexagon will appear. Here, you might ask, Teacher, if I want to create a triangle, what do I do? This is actually very simple. When you click on the polygon tool, you will see it in the lower right, a place labeled Sides. Here, we can see it is six. That means there are six sides. If you want a triangle, which of course has three sides, then here, you just have to enter threes and hit Enter. You can see that the shape at the cursor has become a triangle. You can draw various kinds of polygons, of course, the more sides you have, the closer it will be to a circle. You can try practicing with this. Please try using the rectangle, circle, and polygon tools. Next, I will explain how to use the arc tool. Because when we do design, we can't always only use straight lines. We will now examine how to use the arc tool. On our screen, there are a total of four arc tools. Let's begin by looking at the first one. When the first tool is selected, a tool like a compass will appear. This is actually used to create a center point. And then after positioning the center point, we can move our mouse to use the pencil tool to draw an arc around the center. This is the first arc tool. Okay, the second arc tool is more like the straight line tool. It actually uses the pencil tool to draw a straight line segment. But what's different from the straight line tool is that actually if you pull on the line, then it will move into a curve. While we are moving it into a curve, there are, of course, a few possibilities. The first possibility is horizontal. That is the X, Y axes. If you press up on your keyboard, you will see a blue vertical axis appear on your screen. Now, the arc you draw if we examine it with the rotation tool, you can see that it is a vertical arc. That is the second arc tool. The third arc tool uses angles to draw arcs. The fourth arc tool is the same. It uses a concept similar to a circle, but after drawing an arc, it will draw two straight lines, which turns it into a face. Just like that. So through the use of the arc tools, you can draw a variety of curves and beautifully curved lines. Please give it a try. Okay, hello everyone. Now we will introduce a very important tool in this software, the push-pull tool. We can see the push-pull tool in the toolbar on the left. There is a box shape and an arrow pulling upwards. This is the push-pull tool. Here, we will use a rectangle to create a face. Everyone knows points, lines, surfaces, then solids. So, when you use the push-pull tool, you will need to have a surface first. So, after you draw a rectangle, when you select the push-pull tool, you can create a 3D shape out of this flat rectangle. Fast, right? So, actually, when you are doing different kinds of shaping, you just need one face. For instance, a circle. And then you can use the push-pull tool to change it into a cylinder. We can also explore how when we are using the push-pull tool to push and pull, we can press control on the keyboard to do a layered push or pull. So, in this case, we can see that we can quickly create a lot of 3D shapes, and it's very intuitive.
The push-pull tool has an additional use. It isn't just used to shape and grow planes. Basically, you can also use a downward pushing motion to sculpt a shape. For instance, we just learned the arc tools. You all know that sometimes when we are doing product design, we have to chamfer. We want to avoid sharp right angles that might hurt people. So, for instance, with this rectangle we just drew, if we use the arc tool to draw an arc on its side, after drawing the arc, we can use the push-pull tool to push down the arc we generated. You can see at this point we quickly used the push-pull tool to turn the sharp corner into a round corner. We made an inverted design here very quickly. So that is the push-pull tool. It can extend and it can push down. Next, we will introduce the move tool. The move tool is to the bottom left of the push-pull tool we were just using. The one with left, right, up, and down arrows is the move tool. How do we use the move tool? Basically, we can use it for moving an entire object. We first use the selection tool to select an object. Of course, here we will provide an explanation of selection methods. Other than putting a box around the whole thing, we can also click on the object three times to directly select an object. After we have selected an object, we can select the Move tool to move the object. Now, while it is moving, it might move in different ways due to the point of view. For instance, if you were on its side, then, of course, when you move it, it will mostly move horizontally. Up and down movement is also possible. But if you look at it from a different angle, for instance, from above, maybe it would be more convenient for you to move it horizontally. Actually, there is another way to make it move as you wish. Sometimes you can directly press the up arrow on your keyboard. If you press up, the movement will go directly along the blue vertical axis. If you press the left arrow, of course it will move on a different path. Additionally, movement actually has another meaning. Apart from moving an entire object, we can select an individual part of an object, or components, and move them. For instance, we can use the Selection tool to select one line of this object individually. After we select it, we can use the Move tool. We can see that actually this line, when moved on its own, causes a change in the shape of this object. So, actually, movement can be divided into the movement of components and the movement of entire objects. You can try them both. Okay, hello everyone. Now we will talk about the Rotate tool. In the toolbar on the left, below the Move tool we used just now, there are two rotating arrows. This is the Rotate tool. After selecting it, we need to first decide which object we want to rotate. So, we first select an entire object, then we click on the Rotate tool. Now we can see that there is one horizontal and one vertical rotation. Why is this? Because when we decide to rotate an object, there are two axes of rotation, the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. So if we decide on horizontal rotation, then we need to first position a center for the horizontal rotation. After you place it, then the entire object can be rotated horizontally. If we vertically rotate, then we position it on its side. After you position it, you left-click. Now you will see that the object rotates vertically. Additionally, these rotations actually have angles. If you want to make a more precise rotation, for example, a 90-degree rotation, you can first do a side selection and then position the center point. When you're rotating, you can use your left hand to type 90 on the keyboard. In Angle, in the lower right corner, enter 90 and then press Enter. Now you will see that the entire object has rotated 90 degrees. Now we will introduce the Scale tool. The Scale tool is just below the Move tool. 
there is a rectangle and an arrow in the top right. This image is the scale tool. The scale tool is usually used to scale objects. After we use the selection tool to select something, we then click the scale tool. Now you will see that a lot of small dots appear in your object. These dots are used for scaling. If you draw a diagonal after you left click with your mouse, you can scale the object in equal proportions. If you select the middle points after left clicking, it will be scaled vertically. So each different scaling actually has different uses. If you are scaling laterally, it might be an entire, a little bit like compression, that kind of a scaling. We can actually use the scale tool a lot. Actually, the tools that I have explained to you can all be used in combination for different kinds of shapes. For example, the circle tool we just used can be used to draw a circle. Then we can use the push-pull tool to pull out a cylinder. Now, if you want to use the layered push-pull that I just taught you by pressing the control key, you can see that there are many layers inside. They are those lines inside. Now we can use the selection tool to select these lines and then use the scale tool that we just learned. We just have to click on the dots around it, then hold the control key while scaling. And now you will see that all of our ring lines can be shrunk. Now our original cylinder has become like a sculpture, having many layers. So actually for various designs, you can use the tools we just learned in combination. Try thinking about which combination of tools to use to create certain shapes. Hello everyone. Now we will introduce some measurement tools. In the toolbar on the left, we can see that there is a tape measure. The tape measure is basically used for measuring or setting anchor points. So if we are in the middle, we can see the number in the lower right corner actually changes. This means that the measurement keeps going, but we wanna make an anchor point. We use the left mouse button to place an anchor point in the middle. There's another measurement tool to the right. This is the dimension measurement tool. Dimension uses your mouse. It directly displays the length of the selected segment between two points. For instance, you can see 1152 millimeters. So actually, if you make a label for a shape that you've created, even if we scale the shape that we drew, its length, will be accurately reflected in the measurement. So when designing works in the future, if you're making real models, you can use these measurements to do things like cutting out each section or using a laser cutter. Next, we are going to introduce the text tool. You can use the text tool to quickly do some 3D text modeling. We see in the toolbar here that there is a letter A. After we click it, place 3D text will appear. This is where you input the content of your text. Here, if we use English, we can just enter a simple A, B, C. Then here, you can decide its height. You can also set different fonts. Now we can press place. After we press it, you can see that ABC has immediately appeared. Actually, when this font is first generated, it is in group. When we are working with a group, we can break up the group. To break up the group, right click. Here there is an option called explode. After you press explode, the grouping will go away. Now you can change their orientation. For example, we can use the push-pull tool to thicken them or change their shapes while you are designing if you want to. For example, 
visualized design with characters, this would be a useful tool. So far, everything you have seen is white. But actually, while we are designing, we can't always only use pure white. So how do we add color? In the toolbar on the left, look below the selector tool. This paint bucket is the tool for adding color. After clicking it, then on the right, materials will appear. In the default panel of materials, there will be a lot of preset colors. You can directly choose the color and color objects. There are also a lot of different materials. We can choose different materials from this list here. For example, if we want a wood color, we can choose wood. After we choose wood, we can see that the material has changed to wood. We can choose plywood or different colors of wood textures. Let's give it a try with plywood. After we click on it, the color changes, but you will see that when you choose this color, its size will be a little different, affecting the way we see it. So actually, in the Edit menu, after we click in, we can see that the color and size of this wood can be changed. Let's pull down the selection menu. Size appears here. If we make it smaller, you will see that the appearance of its size changes. So actually, if you choose a different material, you will have to somewhat edit its size. This might improve the effect of its texture. Now we will show you how to integrate your finished products and pictures. When we enter this window of the program, how do we carry out an action that integrates your design with a photo? First, we can see the camera menu at the top. After clicking into camera, the match new photo option will appear. It's a menu for matching an image. Let's select it. On the desktop, I have already saved pictures you have collected for the background. Of course, these pictures are from each of your community surveys where you collected background photos for the area that you want to design. So we'll bring this picture in. First, we click on the picture and open it. In the window, you can see that your work is actually first in a transparent state. But don't worry, we can fix this later so it reappears. Basically, if you match a picture, you will see that you need to integrate it by doing some things, like changing the perspective. First, when we first open the picture, we can see the blue vertical axis. The blue axis is actually very simple. Towards the bottom, we can hold down this point here at this place. If you want to see a reasonable perspective in your picture, you must move this point to the ground in the photo. After you place it, what we do next is to take the vanishing points on either side and drag them outside of the picture. The left point actually appears very clearly. We drag it out. The vanishing point on the right might be placed on the vanishing line. So you have to first move away the vanishing lines and then drag the vanishing point outside of the picture. Because basically this is a two-point perspective. So the two vanishing points must go to the left and the right. Then we will look at the cross line. The height of this line actually simulates the height of the human eye. So in the picture, if it were a real person looking, you place the line at about the height that her eyes would be. Drag it to a proper angle. After we adjust it, we can then use the camera menu to turn off match new photo. Just now, the auxiliary line of sight disappeared, but our design work is still in a transparent state. In the menu on the right, we can restore it. In the right side menu, there is a bar called Styles. Here, we can choose the Edit option. Then, after you select it, there will be five squares below. Please choose the small blue square on the far right. 
After you select the small blue square, pull this menu down. Here there is a match new photo menu. Let's turn off foreground photo. You can see that now the shape you designed is no longer transparent. So through this matching, we can combine the graphics we design with real pictures. Okay, now that we have learned SketchUp, do you feel that drawing 3D graphics is easy? Actually, SketchUp can be used in many different ways. For example, I have used SketchUp when doing interior design to help a carpenter visualize the kind of design I wanted. Actually, SketchUp can also be used for many other things. For example, if you want to do some movie set design or stage design, all your 3D modeling of sets can be designed quickly and intuitively with 3D modeling software. Through this, your idea can take a three-dimensional shape to be shown to others. So, SketchUp is a very easy and useful tool. I hope you can get plenty of practice. In our next unit, we will introduce some output methods of SketchUp, as well as some plugins. See you next time.